Hi, this is Joel again, and I'm going to be making another short video here relative to the AnyRidge uh, drilling protocol in different densities of bone. And the reason I wanted to start off with this slide right here, because you can clearly see, again, when we're talking about D1, D2, D3, and D4, we're specifically talking about different types of bone. All right? So D1, as you can clearly see here, is very compact, hard cortical bone. Uh, typically, you have the cortical plate, as you can see up here. But then it, uh, it does open up, it can open up into, let's say, a D2 bone underneath or, or more trabeculate type bone. But D1 bone uh, can be white all the way down with no bleeding, uh, for instance, in its osteotomy whatsoever. D bone, uh, D2 bone is a little bit softer than that, all right? Typically, again, with the cortical plate, but then with bleeding, slight bleeding throughout the uh, osteotomy itself. D3 bone, as you can see, it becomes a little bit more trabeculate. D4 bone, a little bit more spongy or trabeculae. <laughs> and there is a, you know, a D5 category, let's just call it. And there, I, I'll say there all, there's also a D1 plus category because I've seen that many times. But there is, a, uh, for instance, a D5 category or your softer bone, uh, typically in the posterior maxilla. So how do we deal with the different scenarios is the question. So a lot of docs ask me all the time, what is your drilling protocol? And my patent answer is, it, uh, sorry, not protocol. What is your drilling RPM speed? And my patent answer is, it depends. Okay, why does it depend? It depends on the different densities of bone that you're in. Do you need to use uh, just as fast, for instance, 1,000 to 1,200 RPM uh, in D1 bone like you, like you would in D1 bone? Do you need to use that same RPM in D4 bone or D5 bone? No, you don't. Okay, so it just depends, and every patient is different, so that's why we have to be cognizant as to the different um, aspects and options that, that are uh, available to us. All right, so here we go. Let's start the video, but I am going to pause it and, go, and kind of go through each one. Here you can clearly see the lance, by the way. The lance starts, uh, the only mark on the lance burr is a 10 millimeter mark, but you can clearly see the pronounced point or... Uh, starting uh, point on the lance itself for your initial osteotomy and let's go ahead and start the video here now clearly again so you're always going to start with your lance or linderman and that's again through d1 d2 d3 and d4 the next drill that you see and by the way it's showing the drilling protocol for a 4.5 by 10 any ridge implant okay so the next drill that you see is a 2.0 uh, drill twist drill and the markings on here are 7, 8.5, 10, 11.5, 13, and 15. So your 10 millimeter, 7, 8.5, 7, 8.5, 10. Your 10 millimeter mark is right there. Okay. All right. So let's proceed. So that's your second drill. Now for D4, D5 bone, it goes into segments here and it stops and says, okay, D4 or D5 bone. Here's your final drill. It could be your 2.0. 2, uh, 2 for instance, if you're in D5 bone, it could be your 2.0 or 2.9. It just depends on the field that you have in, your, in the, in the uh, handpiece that you have and that you're using, as well as your particular tactile sense. So you could use a 2.0 for D5 bone, or you could use a 2.9 for your D4 bone. All right? Because uh, the 4.5 implant has a 3.3 core. So here, you're clearly undersizing it. Or you could actually drill it out to, if you wanted to, again, you could drill it out to a 3.3 uh, osteotomy and just let the implant uh, try to engage the bone. However, now you're taking a chance of it actually not engaging the bone if it's too soft. All right? So it's, again, it's up to you. That there is the, the, I'll use the word variability of the any ridge. It's really up to you and your tactile sense as well as your feel that you have. And that's why I always say use the handpiece for your implant placement because it gives you much better torque control. All right. Um, so with this system, you want to stay conservative uh, because the threads for sure will grab. Now, again, let's go over D5. 2.0 or D4 could be a 2.0 or 2.9. Let's continue. So there's your 2.9 going in and placing the implant all the way to depth. Should go in pretty easily. All right, now for D3 bone, what would you do? So 2.9 
or 3.3. Now here, clear, clearly you can see it's D3 bone. Again, 7, 8.5, and 10. So final drill could be 2.9 or 3.3. It just depends. Now, we, uh, this particular video is not showing our cortical bone drills that we do have in the system. Um, but we definitely do have the cortical bone drill, which you can cl uh, use up here to simply open up the top of the osteotomy for your uh, dense, a little bit more denser cortical bone. So let's go over that. Now, 3.3 drill again. There's 2.9. There's 3.3. Now, what this is doing, this is doing something. It's, it's kind of showing a little trick here. You can drill halfway up the osteotomy to open up the osteotomy here to your 3.3, but then it's leaving the apical portion, the smaller uh, 2.9 size. Why is that? Because typically, again, uh, the higher you go in the, in the posterior maxilla, the softer it is uh, underneath the cortical bone. So that's just, if you will, kind of uh, uh, doing a little trick or trying something, if you will, uh, or using the drill as a cortical bone drill by simply opening up the top of the osteotomy but letting the underneath stay as it is. Continue. Let's place the implant. Implant's going into place. And again, you're getting good stability, but rather better stability here because you didn't go all the way down the apical uh, aspect of the 3.3 drill and you're letting the implant uh, engage that smaller uh, apical portion. All right. Now, Let's go to D1, D2, which is always a challenge, more, more so D1 than anything. So you can clearly see, number one, your more dense bone. All right, here we go. So that is your, looks like a 2.9. Let's call that a 3.3 there. The next one is a 3.8. Okay, so 3.8 is relative to your what? All right, D1 or D2 osteotomy. Now, why is that? Remember, what are we doing? We're placing a 4.5. So remember, we said stay conservative. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you can try your 3.8 osteotomy first and then place your implant. Now, again, one thing it's not showing is the cortical bone drill. I want to really clearly point out that we do have a cortical bone drill for the cortices on top. This, this procedure did the same thing. It went halfway down the osteotomy and then it uh, left the apical portion uh, viable. Now, what I would have done, honestly, is gone all the way down. When you're harder bones, uh, harder bone options for D1 or D2, you can definitely go all the way down to the apical portion and your implant definitely will grab due to the enhanced threads. So your implant clearly is going in there and uh, engaging the bone nicely. All right, now let's watch the whole thing again. And I'm going to just let it play all the way through. So D1, D2, D3, D4, and D5. Again, for your more dense bone and your a slow pumping action of the uh, twist drills going into place. Implant lysine going into place there with the any ridge. Enhanced threads. D3 bone option. And again, use, kind of using that trick of going just halfway down the osteotomy as the cortical bone drill. If you're going to place a 5.0 implant, for instance, you can use, you can actually use a 4.8 by 7 stopper drill as a cortical bone drill on top, which is a nice little trick. Now here's your D1, and that's your 2.9, uh, that's your 3.3 it looks like, your 3.8. Let's see if it goes, yeah, no, that's halfway down. So that was your 4.3 drill. And then your implant being placed all the way down. Again, more dense bone is your, the more dense bone or your D1 bone is your, more your challenge. So again, short video trying to help you understand the drilling osteo or drilling uh, application for the Ridge implant relative to your osteotomies. Different bone requires different drilling protocols. So this is why I'm really emphasizing the different aspects of what are options relative to the drills and the size of the implants. Okay, so I hope this helps. Uh, Joel.Gonzalez at MegagenUS.com. Have a great day and we will talk again soon. Take care.